We have Charles Slumwitz, who is an IP lawyer, um, who I'm very curious to know his perspective on uh, you know, forgeries and appropriation art and the value of authenticity and um, what it would be like to translate Mark's works into NFTs. Really interesting was really the development of what's happening so quickly in the NFT space, in the art world generally. Obviously, this reminded me of Major Look, that documentary on Netflix, which is about Anne Friedman and um, Nodler. It was the whole art scandal with the $80 million. You had uh, Pollock, some other wells, and they were all being forged for profit. And none of the museums ended up, one, one curator ended up going to court, but it settled out of court because a lot of the museums didn't want to admit that they were actually being duped. And it seems as though, you know, kind of the development, the courts are kind of moving towards. Well, NFTs are actually kind of a derivative adaptation, which means that we're subject to initial copyright law. When this was happening, I didn't know it would be the case, but it looks like the courts are basically saying, as long as, for instance, if there's some sort of um, replica here, but it was done correctly in terms of you're not infringing on somebody else's copyright, then yeah, you're able to make an NFT, and then it's your own. So That's instead awesome. of signing to God, you can sign his own name. That's right. As long as it obviously clears and you're not infringing on another author, it, it is an original expression, I would interpret it. And I think that the primary thing is, uh, intent may not matter, uh, because there are certain exceptions to copyright law, especially fair use. If, if, for instance, if these paintings are actually for the, the display and kind of the edification, this is pedagogical in a way. Uh, you're understanding and learning the process. That you're allowed to do, and the Supreme Court held that that's perfectly fine. And moving forward, what was very interesting about the NFT space is a lot of artists are giving away their rights. And I believe, and not everyone has this opinion, that Board Apes was actually somewhat of a mistake because of the way that they created it. There were just a lot of loose terms, uh, pretty inexpensive in the beginning. Now they're worth millions of dollars each. But every person who owned this piece of art had the license to create their own pieces of art along with it, their own stories, their own hard forks. So because of this, especially granting to the community, as you mentioned, this is giving a lot of other people an opportunity to become a part of a community, including potential with Mr. Landis if he does it correctly. But those licenses that they give, they are limited. It depends. It's um, ultimately up to the artist. Well, uh, like with Board Apes specifically, they are limited up to a certain dollar amount and then red share. Yes, sir. Yeah, right. So it, the artist gets to choose. And, and one of the best things about NFTs is now the artist could get paid because sometimes the artist has to, you know, die or kind of go through an auction house. People who are fans of the work could just buy from the artist directly. And also royalties are super important because around the world, uh, not in America, there are a lot of laws about the royalty and resale of artists. America is a lot different. California is even confused. But with <laughs> NFTs, you could literally just put in a smart contract. Every time there's a resale, the artist gets 10%. And that's just agreed upon. And it could be forever, at least as of now. And there can't be any like fraudulence in that sense. Like, what if like you know someone came up with the way of hacking into you know open seas, et cetera, et cetera? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, there are, there are instances. I mean, technically, a pure blockchain shouldn't be able to be replicated. Right now, the biggest case happening is these two uh, young kids, around 20 years old. Uh, it's called Frosties. They sold it for millions of dollars. Yeah. And then they, they pulled away the NFTs and just shut down their site. Right. So the FBI actually was able to locate and find them. And this is one of the first cases called the rug pull, right. where as long as if you're going to give like representations to the public that you're selling, you may want to be there and stay with the community. And that's right. what we're finding matters the yeah, most. It's very easy to kind of indict somebody on wire fraud. So it's completely different uh, than just forging and proving that across state lines. Is the SEC regulating this at all? Are they, you know, I mean, we have the, the laws are always evolving. I mean, we have digital assets now being under consideration, and all the lawyers are trying to figure out what does this mean. It's trial and error. And I think that yeah, it's very important to just be safe and and kind of work with the guidance.